Hey, can everybody hear us? So, yeah, so this is uh, theme two of the three sessions in the in total and our theme here in this uh, session is a place we have uh, three speakers and uh, first speaker Miss Niramon Kurusri Sombat I'd like for you to be the first speaker in this session uh, Niramon is teaching at the uh, Cholongkorn University and uh, has launched an urban design and development center UDDC and is working in the area of uh, urban planning I was surprised because I, I hadn't known. She graduated uh, from the University of Tokyo. She has a PhD. She spent uh, about six years in Japan, and she understands very well Japanese. So be, be careful when you uh, say anything, and she speaks uh, Japanese very well. And for the 250th anniversary of Bangkok, Bangkok 250, she is very well uh, famous uh, uh, with her work at the river front. And we also have uh, Mr. Serizawa, Keiji Serizawa, Ser Ashizawa, and uh, François Roche. Then we would like to have a discussion all together. We are on the same floor, on the same level, as you can see, so let us be casual. And then uh, I would like to uh, invite the uh, uh, audience to uh, ask uh, many questions, so we would like to have a discussion later on all together. Thank you very much. So, Nuremo, over to you. Um. <laughs> um, so hi. I'll do it in English. Um, so this is um, the title of my presentation. The placemaking from below means bottom up. The lessons from failures. I'm going to talk about our, my failures uh, for Bangkok's uh, committee planning. Um, uh, uh, did you join the conference yesterday? Any of you joined the conference yesterday? Okay, only you, thank you. <laughs> so um, actually yesterday we talked a lot about the, the post-industrial city and we talked a lot about um, the future of Tokyo. Yesterday there was a, a, a big presentation of the, the future of Tokyo in 2035 and um, everybody seems to agree that um, for Tokyo, in order to maintain uh, the leading roles of, uh, like uh, in the, the global context, place or place identity must be maintained and play the key role in, um, in, the, in the city planning. And I guess uh, everybody of you here knows so well that um, people participation is a kind of uh, the prerequisite of um, the place making, not only in Tokyo but everywhere in the world, including Bangkok. So today I'm, I would like to share with you um, the place making, or as you know, Majisukuri, which I study with my professor, Professor Yukio Nishimura, and uh, Professor um, Takeru Kitasawa for five, year in, in five years in Todai, so I learned it by heart. And when I went back to, to Bangkok in um, 2005, I tried to apply it in, in my cities, which is um, so different, and we have uh, so different in context. So, um, so this is um, the theme of my presentation. Um, first, I just uh, would like to give you a general back background of Bangkok. Our city is very new. We just um, we are less than three centuries. We um, found in um, like um, the late uh, eight, 18th century, and but we are very big. Bangkok is a very sprawling city, so we have like um, 1,500 square kilometers, and um, Bangkok is the largest city in Thailand. And it's quite amazing that the size is 34 times larger than the second large in Thailand, which is the Udon Thani. Just uh, think about Tokyo and Osaka. So we are much larger. We are like a primate city. And we have like 10, 10 uh, million um, inhabitants in Bangkok. But the density is just only um, less than 4,000. 
about like half of uh, density of uh, Tokyo, so it's a very sprawling city. So we, when we talk about people participation in the placemaking, you have to look at, very um, importantly, you have to look at the structure of the local state called Bangkok, uh, and this is uh, the structure of uh, socio-political in Bangkok. We divide it into three levels. We have, uh, uh, of course, the central BMA, Bangkok Metropoli uh, Metropolitan Administration. Um, the leader, the governor or the mayor came from election. But at the second level, we have districts, 50 districts. Um, but we are so different from you, Tokubesuku. Uh, we are not um, our, um, the leader of the district level don't come from the election, but appointment by the, by the mayor. So um, it's just like the field office of uh, BMA. And this is uh, the red um, box, it's uh, at the organic, the ground level, the communities. We have like a thousand of communities within Bangkok, which is uh, very active, whereas community slum, um, traditional communities, housing estate and condominium. So this is uh, just to give you the general view, like how, I mean, this is a structure that we have to struggle when we're going to make our places. Just to give you another picture, just to compare. Um, this is Bangkok. Um, yeah, this is a size. We divide into the 50 districts, but we have only one mayor. Only one mayor from the election compared to um, Tokyo is a little um, larger, but you have like one big governor and a lot of, I mean, mayors. Um, also Paris, which is uh, like uh, 50 times smaller than, than, than Bangkok, but it's um, divided into um, 20 arrondissements and they have uh, mayors at two levels. So this is uh, like uh, give you um, a, a picture how, I mean, uh, how difficult or how easy that uh, people in the city can participate in the place making. And um, as I teach in the urban planning, I give you a little bit of this. Bangkok even, um, yeah, is very new and we are quite, um, how to say, um, also new in, in planning. For example, if you know the history of uh, London or, or Paris, they start planning since like um, 17th century, like after the Great Fire of London. But uh, in, in Bangkok, we just have the first city plan 20 years ago. And this is, um, this is uh, the plan, the, the, the tools and the mechanism that we still use today, which is just a land use plan, the heritage from the, the American era. And, um, and it came after we start to grow. So um, yeah, we, we have only this as a tool to uh, control the growth of a city. And when we um, look at the planning paradigm of um, the, the BMA is still top down. We have, uh, as, um, as you already seen, we have only one um, Bangkok governor and at the district level, we don't have the, the planning, magistrate office, we don't have at the district level. They just collect the garbage and just do, uh, doing the routine jobs. All the plans prepared by the office at the city level for like 1,500 square kilometer. So yes, people some, somehow very active, but active at the very end when there's no point of return. Always a clash between people who, who don't like the plan. And then it, um, always like the, the eviction, people don't like, don't want to move out, but um, this uh, Bangkok gov uh, government would like them to move out. So this is um, the, the, the pictures you always see on the first page of newspaper. So um, four years ago, after um, I teach for like four, um, six years and experiment like small magistrate project, um, with um, our volunteer students. So I got a kind of like a proposition to have uh, the seed money from the public organization to set up something like the, the magistrate office to have a full-time staff. So at the time, I just thought about um, the, 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 how to say, 
the invention, the innovation by my professor Takeru Kitasawa. Um, in 2006, he set up the UDC, Urban Design Office in uh, Kachiwanoha, in the Kachiwa city, with the co collaboration between the um, to uh, University of Tokyo, uh, Mitsui Fodosang, and, um, and who? I, I forgot. Uh, Mitsui Fodosang and Kachiwa city. And, <laughs> sorry. So this is a kind of the spin-off from the university as a platform to, I mean, engage people and also um, various stakeholders into the decision-making process. So I just apply that, but with a different scale at the Bangkok scale. I mean, at the time I was much younger than this and more ambitious. So we start to do experimentation at Bangkok level, and we call ourselves UDDC, Urban Design Development Center, in uh, 2013. And um, we have like two main tracks. We have several services, but we have two main tracks. First is um, research. And this is uh, our key milestone, Bangkok uh, Good Walk, how to um, how to tackle, I mean, how to improve uh, people's life. As you know that Bangkok is uh, the world's worst traffic in the world. We just got this award for like five years in the row. And this year also, this is uh, the worst city and has a traffic problem. But as you know that traffic problem you cannot tackle in the short time. You need to develop the rail system and everything. So, but for mobility, we can. So that's why we start like uh, the Good Walk project, how to improve the walkability in Bangkok. This is uh, the first urban big data um, project in, in even in Thailand. And this is uh, just one output. So we try to first identify where you can live without cars. Means that a in um, daily life, the destination that you have to go to, you have to walk in, just located in the walking distance. For, for Bangkok, we survey 800 uh, meters. So it's quite uh, not so bad. Within the inner city area, we have uh, um, like 60% uh, that you can live without car. But this is just um, the accessibility, not yet about the quality of, uh, I mean, the, the walking environment. But um, now this is the first phase, and now we, we arrive the last phase. So, and the second track, this is a design service, design and planning service. We do, um, in several scales, this, this is uh, one of the largest projects that we ever did, um, planning for Bangkok's inner city area, the regeneration plan. As yesterday, uh, Professor um, uh, Ishikawa, he presented Tokyo 2035. We did the same thing, but it's uh, uh, 2032 when Bangkok is going to have, I mean, a 250 anniversary, so we're so young. And um, so this is just uh, to give you the, the, the idea what we are doing. And also we try to complement, we try to invent the new a planning mechanism. As you remember, we have only land use plan, which is so like, um, um, how to say, stone age um, uh, planning tools. So we try to apply the um, uh, Shiku Kekaku, the district plan um, in Thailand. So this is uh, one of the district plan we plan as a pilot project for Bangkok uh, 250. And that's just an overview of uh, what we are doing, UDDC. And from now, I'm going to give you the details how, I mean, how people making their places by uh, giving you the, I mean, the example of Yanawa Real Front Project. If you go to, um, I, I guess everybody of you love Jiao Priya, like uh, when I read Dogs and Demon, uh, Alex Kerr, um, uh, Inuto Ani, uh, you read it, very famous. When I was a student here, I loved that book. He, he loved Japan so much, and he loved, uh, and he also lived, he has two lives, he lived in Tokyo and in Bangkok, and he loved Chao Priya. He said, oh, it's so nice, uh, blah, blah. But actually, it's nice when you have money to fa pay for a beer or a wine to sit in the, how to say, in the bar or the restaurant next to the river. I mean, Arun, this is a Arun Temple. It's not for everybody. 
And as you can see, this is um, this is uh, this is uh, the the mapping that we 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 did a survey about the, the public space means um, the space that you can, anybody can access without using the money. We have only like fifteen percent. I mean, this is just uh, only um, uh, the real front in the inner inner city area. So. Um, as um, maybe you know, we have a famous festival like Ratong that people uh, go to worship the river. It's super, super crowded. Even it's very dangerous to be there in the festival time because it's very limited, it's a very contested area. So we, as uh, the real front, uh, everybody would like to use an experience, a nice, have a nice experience, the real front. So it's, uh, we would like to create, I mean, the real front public space. And we look where to start. And we found exactly at Yanawa, which is the tip of uh, uh, the central business district, Silo Mosaton of Bangkok. It's just uh, in the heart of the, of the city. But look at this. This is uh, just uh, the, the somehow it's overexposed my city, but this is uh, what is really uh, happening now. So you you have like um, long rear front, but you cannot really access to it. And um, we chose this site because it's just located in the heart of the city. It's so vibrant. You have uh, international hotels, restaurants, school, university. Uh, the very high density residential area, but the strong point is that within the one kilometer long, and this is Jaran Krung, the first road of Bangkok, you have only like um, a few landowners. This is the last, uh, the last large land plot in 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 Bangkok, and eighty percent owned by public institution and temple means that. This is a, a big opportunity for us to negotiate for um, a plan that can balance between the public goods and the uh, economic uh, returns. So we start this project like um, 2015 when we just set up our office. At first, we're so ambitious. We start with um, like uh, the what we stud what I study in Japan, the full scale regeneration urban regeneration on the refund area. We start before the coup d'etat. We, we start before the military took power. So we discuss a lot with, um, I mean, the government came from the election. And after the coup d'etat, as you know that a huge urban design project, you need a lot of a high level of a political commitment. So we discuss with a stakeholder, maybe we just start from something that possible, so it's just a red line. Everything reduced to le red line, the promenade. Maybe this is um, like it can be the anchor of the development. And you can see the this is the landowners, um, the how to say the Ministry of uh, Transport, um, the temple, the Bangkok Dock. Um, the private land is just here, the small landowners, and this is a crowd property bureau and a temple. So we organized a, a series of the public participation workshops, uh, SML, XL, all size. This is um, the, the, uh, the, the public uh, presentation of what we did with the students from the University of Tokyo and the uh, Beijing University. We tried to make it um, international and attract a lot of uh, local people to, to uh, our process. This is uh, this is the first. Uh, this is at first sight between us, UDDC, and I mean the local stakeholders. And when everybody agree to go on, so we scope down. We go deeper. This is a focus group with um, the, the 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 small landowners. They still how to say operate their business, which is related to the fish market. If you remember, there's a fish market. This is all like a Sukichi of Bangkok. So all this is um, the, the, the business owner. And also, we also um, organize a kind of like um, multilateral uh, meeting with, um, I mean, the, the power holder. As you know, in Thailand, we are so religious. We still um, 
we are not secular yet. I, I guess we're still very religious um, <laughs> state. So um, he is um, one of the most powerful monk in Thailand, to be said. Yeah, and and he engaged. I, we engaged him since the uh, how to say the the, the day one. So uh, if you remember the workshop we organized in his uh, temple because he has a large room. So he um, always uh, participate in this. And oh, this is uh, people from Bangkok, um, Metropolitan Ministry of uh, Transportation and uh, Muslim community around the, the neighborhood. Also, we engage, um, I mean, um, students from the local area in order to create a program. And this is the last, <coughs> the final, when we try to wrap up. This is landowner along the rear front. Um, all the ministry, uh, all the how to say minist ministry, and also the public uh, institution, and also the the local business um, owner, and also the BMA. Even though they they don't own any land, but they take care of the flood dam and also the street improvement, and also the Ministry of Transportation who take care of the of the pier and uh, everything that um, how to say go to the river. Um, all the programming came from the result of the the process, and this is uh, just to show you the output of the the rear front design. So as you can see, it's linked, and it's try to um, create a nice rear front extend from the the uh, each land plot, but it's very customized to the design because, for example, the temple they would like people to come to that temple a lot, so we just decide to integrate and blend into um, their property. But for um, for the, how to say, the, the small landowner, they're so worried about the security and the, the nuisance, the noise and everything. So, so we, we try to use the design to customize all the, the physical to, uh, uh, environment of the this promenade. And it's just to show, um, and this is uh, like the new pier, um, it, the, 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 the existing condition is so bad. This is uh, one of the, this is the only one transit between pier, rail, and bus in Bangkok. This is the intermodal and it's, it's so dangerous, so bad, so dark, and everything smells so bad. So we try to improve uh, into like uh, this um, uh, environment. And this is a new pier. I, I go very fast, and this is uh, just to, to give an example, like uh, the nice real front space in in front of the fish market office, like a uh, Sukichi. And uh, after that, we also would like to know the opinion of the wider public. So as you can see, he we engage him, and from the day one, he always be with us. Even he's very really super super high rank uh, abbot. So. Um, you can see the high level of uh, public support. They would like this to be the pilot project of the rear front promenade in Bangkok. And not only the traditional uh, meeting um, event, we also try to use, um, how to say, the, the, the other media like a website, uh, Facebook to communicate with people, to um, give update the um, people the news and also the YouTube, you, you can go and have a look. And we, uh, we organize a kind of like uh, the exhibition I want, just to show like um, how the, 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 the opinions, the real opinion of the people who live there. As you can see, um, yeah, this is uh, the owner of the land and the student, the potential user in the future the Muslim community who live next to the neighborhood and the, the local school which is situated in the site. And we also try to demonstrate because public space is so bizarre for Bangkok people. We know only department store. We, we live in the condominium or the, like a suburban housing and at, in the weekend we just go to the department store by car. So public space is something unknown for us. So we try to make it into like a scale one-to-one -one. at the uh, Bangkok Dock with um, our former student who is now the like uh, artist and exhibition. Like to show this is good, we should have 
this guy smells a lot in our in in Bangkok, and this is a dry dog. So this is um, organized by um, our former students in the urban department, and it was so successful. So we organized. Actually, this is a uh, uh, 2015. So uh, uh, in the next year, we have another artist lighting and sound to make it more interesting, and also we try to give the information through the public exhibition on site. A lot of local people come to ask like, oh, when it's going to be really implemented. And this is, um, how to say, the structure in the dry dock. This is belong to other events, not us. And uh, even this project is not commissioned by BMA. They, uh, from time to time, I mean, Joy us as one of the key stakeholder, but they know our project so well. So when um, BMA organized a kind of uh, featuring presentation between New York Highlight, um, they asked us to be the representative of Bangkok to present this project. If you know him, Joshua David, he's uh, the founder of the Friends of Highlight. He's so famous. So we exchanged a lot on this. However. After the coup d'etat, one year, uh, the, the government, especially the prime minister, uh, had an idea to, to give back, to return the happiness to people by this. This is uh, maybe give the more tangible, how to say, output, like, okay, what um, the government, uh, military government can do for people. So they try to make a real front space after he visit. Uh, Han River in South Korea. So he, he was so impressed by the a nice big promenade uh, along the Seoul River. So he just uh, directly implemented to Jiang Paya, which is um, much, um, how say, narrow than um, Seoul uh, River. So um, this, is, this structure is like uh, 20 meters in the river, both sides, with, um, how to say, 14 kilometers long. And he wanted to be constructed in seven months, include all the design and everything. This um, size in seven months is like uh, you have to go and conquer that city or that country. He used uh, the same mentality. So, and as you, if you remember, our project is here. This is just a part of the, the government project. So, Actually, this project bring a lot of shock to people because uh, newspaper also simulate like what is going to happen when this project really implemented. You see, it become very small. And as you know now, the rainy season start and 2011 Bangkok in, in Thailand, half of Thailand submerged under the water. And if uh, Bangkok, which is uh, at the end of the Chao Phraya River before the Thai Gulf, our river uh, remain only this size. <laughs> what is going to happen? Strong opposition by several groups in the city, and um, yeah, that um, really um, how to say. This is a meeting between. Uh, we had a lot of meeting with uh, military cabinets, even even though they they they, they know a lot of um, know a lot about our project because uh, we appear on media's like newspaper and television. So he, they would like to know what exactly why why can you do this and people accept your project. However, he still proceed. I mean. Ask, um, I mean, the, um, he still proceed in his idea, and it's going to be implemented maybe um, next year. Yeah, and this this is Yanawa, and also another project have more or less the same phase. This is, uh, if you remember, this is a district plan that um, in um, um, actually Old Town Thonburi, actually the the oldest area in Bangkok that we did. And we also, this is a pilot, we try to uh, revive the Lilix, um, the unfinished rail structure to be, um, how to say, the, 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 the bike and walkway to link between the east side and the, the, the west side and the east side. A lot of schools are here. This is proposed by people, actually. Uh, he said, uh, why, why don't you do something with this structure? It just, uh, 
be here for uh, 20 years. And this is a former, uh, former mayor. He already um, secured the funding to implement this project. However, it, he, um, last year he has been removed by the military government. So everything has been stalemate again. Even um, the project has been um, well received and well participated. This is a project. And um, yeah, we organized a, another big public hearing. A lot of people came, mo uh, almost 1,000. That's why the, 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 the mayor decided to secure the funding to implement it. And we have a, a huge number of followers. The same phase. So this had been, um, how to say, pending. But uh, the BMA, under the, the new appointed mayor by the military, got an, another idea to link west and uh, the west side and the east side by this big bridge. And people hate it. It's so, yeah. So um, as a conclusion, so this is, um, yeah, this is what we have been doing um, in Bangkok, Majisikuri, uh, Bangkok's version. So when you go to Bangkok and, you s and maybe you think like our city is so bad, it, it doesn't mean that people are not active. People are really making their places. But as you see, the, the structure, the local state and the, the, the politics are not really encouraging. So um, for four years that uh, UDC has been initiated, we have almost 20 projects, different size, same. And it's not only UDC, but also my colleagues in another university, other office that work with uh, p um, local people, um, experience the same problem. So without, um, how to say, the democracy, the, the political stability and commitment, and especially the reformation of the socio-political at the local state of BMA, uh, Majisikri project can never happen. So, <coughs> yeah. But anyway, it doesn't mean that UDC bring no result. For four years, we have been working a lot with uh, partners, communities, medias, medias and private sector. So um, they are so kind to always help us publicize. So the issue of public space, which is un was unknown, the, the walkability, the regeneration has been the worst that has um, in the how say public discussion. And I'm sorry, it's the, a little too much, but actually um, they, they're very kind. And um, yeah, so this is, um, and, and also, um, how to say, UDC has been a kind of uh, the reference of the urban discourse in, in the city. They, they are very kind to us. So this is our next item. As we leave, as yesterday, the one of the conclusions is that we live in the age of the convergence. And this is the age of social communication. We have uh, all kinds of technologies. So um, we try to use this uh, to, to make um, the, the, the solid, solid solidarity among the people, especially at the district level, which is the weakest level, but the most important level in order to create um, the, the place making on the Matisukuri. So now we are uh, collaborate with uh, the Rockefeller Foundation on the project of uh, urban data. We experimenting in Patumwan district, which is the heart of Bangkok. Actually, our office and Chulalongkorn University, where we teach, um, I teach, located in here. The green is a high walk score, very uh, uh, a good a good walk. So this will be the platform for people in the district to to understand, to learn about other people, to learn about their district, to share their information, to create the common grounds for the people. And I guess this is the only way to um, really to do the counterbalance between the, the local government, that um, to do the reform, the local, um, the, 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 the local state reform, it will take time and it will never happen without, um, I mean, the 
the, 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 the consolidation of the local's voice. So um, this is all of my presentation, and I would love to hear any uh, comments and uh, suggestion. Thank you. I just want to have one question. How long are you running this UDDC? Four years. Four years. <laughs> Too short, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please have a seat. So the next speaker I would like to ask Arisawa san to make the presentation. Can you hear us? Uh, my name is Ashizawa. Uh, how do you do? I am uh, doing the work in the architecture as well as uh, uh, pieces of furniture. I would like to uh, uh, talk about the two uh, the topics. Well, uh, I had a pleasure to uh, see uh, Niramon uh, last summer when I brought my family to Thailand for our uh, private uh, trip. And uh, it's, it was really amazing, the project she's working on. And I'd like to talk about the uh, two topics t uh, today I am uh, involved in. Uh, one of them is uh, Ishinomaki Laboratory. Maybe you overheard uh, this name somewhere sometime. I just would like to explain what it is. Uh, currently, Ishinomaki Laboratory is an, uh, a furniture manufacturing company. However, at the beginning, it was a public workshop. It was created as a public laboratory and workshop. And at that time, I made uh, this uh, logo. You can see that the gate is open at the top, uh, right. Maybe some of you know, uh, do not know what Ishinomaki is, a uh, name of a place. So this Ishinomaki laboratory was created. This is the location of Ishinomaki. I made this map because I thought some of the uh, people in the audience are known Japanese. It takes about uh, six hours from Tokyo uh, in, uh, from, uh, by car. Uh, in 2011, uh, the e train didn't uh, reach quite uh, Ishinomaki when I went there uh, first. Now it takes about uh, three and a half uh, year hours by Shinkansen. And uh, it's about 250 miles so from Tokyo. This is a situation of, uh, not the situation of uh, March 11th, 2011. It's about one week later. Uh, there is a lot of uh, water uh, accumulated. Why I became uh, involved in this town of uh, Ishinomaki? One of my clients uh, were uh, was living there. This is the home of uh, this client uh, uh, who was running a restaurant there, and I uh, designed his restaurant. I made a design of his restaurant in 2010. In March 2011, this it uh, was broken this way. As you can see, I was called. Uh, uh, to go to this uh, place, uh, and my client asked me to rebuild uh, the uh, restaurant uh, uh, together. So I uh, uh, went there with a pack of uh, tools uh, to, uh, for the building, and I went uh, brought uh, staff members to start uh, uh, the rebuilding this place. Uh, my client was also running along with the re uh, restaurant a small guest house, and, and uh, the, is the the water uh, flooded the base. Uh, base and uh, the uh, ground floor, but uh, the second floor w was uh, available. So I brought a lot of uh, volunteer people as well, and uh, we were just having a party, uh, enjoying ourselves during the evening time after work, and we were continuing working there. So, and uh, uh, we wanted to call uh, many people uh, who were interested in this uh, uh, town and who wanted to uh, uh, act as volunteers, so uh, architects and uh, also local residents and uh, we were having this type of gathering. During the daytime, uh, we were doing a construction work, we were repairing the uh, building, and uh, uh, toward the uh, beginning of the evening, we were uh, uh, wandering around in the town, walking, and uh, were just uh, thinking about what was happening. And a certain number of people I discovered in town who were extremely interesting. One of them is uh, this uh, master, this gentleman, running a restaurant by the name of Jidaiya. That was about 200 meters away from the restaurant I was working at uh, for the reconstruction. 
and then in uh, about uh, uh, May of 2011, this uh, Jedaya was uh, the only one who was able to reopen for uh, for, uh, for running a restaurant because uh, this uh, gentleman himself uh, re uh, repaired uh, his uh, restaurant building. Uh, why did he have to do that uh, uh, on his own? Because uh, everybody for, uh, in from the uh, construction sectors, constructing companies, was uh, were too busy to uh, work for the repair uh, of uh, public facilities, so they were not able to cover uh, the other uh, private sector buildings such as restaurant. So I think uh, it came to my mind uh, to uh, create an idea of a, a public laboratory. We can uh, bring uh, tools and we can uh, share uh, spaces to do a cutting or other types of works. So I uh, gave a name of uh, uh, Ishinomaki Laboratory and I made it, uh, uh, it into a public laboratory. It was uh, like this at that time. We had some funding. Uh, we received some donation, financial donation as well as donation of supplies and tools and so that we can use uh, uh, this laboratory uh, when we are there, uh, also uh, available for use by the local volunteers. Um, the, uh, so Ishinomaki Laboratory was uh, open, available, but what we, can we do was the question. So we tried to do so, uh, activities with uh, three uh, friends or so. We uh, decided to borrow one uh, shop which was ruined uh, that we discovered. Uh, the, it used to be a bar, so we uh, renamed it uh, an uh, revolving uh, bar, but uh, it means in Japanese uh, restoration uh, bar. And um, it is still running. It became for us a wonderful place of communication, and uh, but for Japanese people, and particularly people from uh, Tohoku region uh, up uh, uh, north uh, and east, they are reluctant to be candidly talking about uh, their own thoughts. But uh, uh, communication over drink was very, very effective. So that was uh, the restoration bar. And also, uh, since the uh, young generations are the ones who support uh, uh, the uh, restoration and recovery uh, after, uh, of the earthquake, uh, so uh, we uh, called upon uh, uh, junior uh, people, young generations, to work with us. Uh, and we decided to create benches together. What kind of benches were they? That was for the movie projection, uh, outdoor movie uh, theater uh, during the evening. What was so wonderful with these benches? Uh, was uh, the following. It was public. It was not a pub private item. It was uh, 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 ever more public item. And uh, these benches that uh, we were uh, making uh, will be uh, ever more widespread throughout the town uh, fr starting at uh, this point in time. Uh, we were not running uh, this um, uh, movie, outdoor movie theater, but with uh, Ishinomaki 2.0, another uh, with another group, we um, had an idea of having this uh, movie. And uh, in another location as of today, uh, this uh, uh, outdoor movie is uh, running and Hot Not Beer, a US company, uh, overheard of our uh, activities. Uh, uh, they came to uh, be working with us. And uh, with Hammer Miller, uh, uh, what was uh, possible for us to do that? Uh, uh, we uh, received a simple material, 2 by 6, 2 by uh, 4. Uh, these are uh, pre uh, 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 ready to uh, use. Uh, type of ingredient. Uh, uh, materials for construction. And we thought that using those already uh, available, uh, ready to use uh, materials, we can uh, uh, quite easily uh, create and temporary houses. But we also, at the same time, wanted to communicate of comfort and with a nice pieces of furniture. But for example, this type of furniture, uh, two by six, two by two, these are the materials, uh, uh, and also two by four, uh, another uh, material uh, being combined uh, to be able or to make this type of pieces of furniture quite easily. Uh, so uh, it's even possible for kids. Uh, children can make these pieces of uh, uh, furniture. We uh, uh, operated this type of workshop sessions to work with uh, uh, kids. And uh, we call the local residents. And uh, if you uh, give a helping hand, uh, you can receive uh, uh, these fur uh, furnitures. So, And we worked with them. And uh, this is an uh, Endai Benchi, uh, one example of the furniture. And uh, we, uh, I am a professional as well, and we uh, tried to uh, request the collaboration of um, uh, professional uh, designers to design these uh, these furniture so that there will be a, a constant uh, remaining meaning uh, in this uh, furniture so that uh, if someone uh, thinks that uh, this is nicely designed, uh, that 
uh, design can be replicated by uh, that someone else. Uh, so we uh, uh, invited a lot of uh, professional design designers to work uh, with us in this. Ishinomaki Laboratory um, simply will be remaining as a uh, uh, craft and industrial laboratory uh, in this uh, town. I uh, uh, started to think about the meaning uh, uh, fullness of that. I thought that it would be one of the engines uh, driving the uh, further uh, recovery and uh, development and the of um, uh, the town. And I thought that uh, it can be a creative engine of that uh, process for uh, the town. And so I found another location in the middle of the town. I decided to rent this space. As a matter of fact, I was able to rent uh, only the half of this space. So, so this is an, uh, the Hamamila team uh, with whom I, we worked for refurbishment. Uh, this is uh, called uh, Irori Shinomaki. It uh, became a quite cool space. At the same time, when we uh, created this uh, space, I uh, understood that uh, we need to have someone uh, from a local community to uh, take care of that. And uh, Chiba san is uh, uh, Mr. Chiba is a person that I found, a former sushi uh, sh uh, chef uh, cook. And uh, so uh, we signed a contract with uh, Chiba-san uh, so that uh, he can use uh, this space, uh, utilize this space. At the same time, he takes care of this space. Uh, this previous picture is uh, his family members. And this is uh, based on donation. Uh, so we uh, uh, organized uh, and held uh, workshops uh, with the local people about uh, furniture uh, making. Uh, these are uh, uh, local ladies. Um, and so this was our la not only for our, our own livelihoods and also uh, uh, the uh, creating of, uh, pieces of furniture with the voluntary activities, we uh, started to receive uh, orders. And uh, next door, there was a stationary uh, shop, and uh, we uh, were able to uh, borrow uh, to uh, that shop uh, premises to expand our own uh, premises. And then uh, we expanded the scope of activities and with uh, uh, local people as well. Now I'd like to show you a few products. Uh, the concept is the same with the very simple materials and making uh, in a very simple manner. So this is the bench that we initially made. And uh, we use an architect to design this. It's a ta this one is a table. So for those people using the Ishinomaki bench, they wanted also a table. So a table was designed. And uh, up to this point, Business uh, was not a priority. We wanted to make things that could be useful in the local community, but uh, they were starting to sell. And uh, uh, but and uh, uh, we wanted to expand this uh, as a business. If we just relied on subsidies, when the subsidies ended, uh, we would not be able to continue. Uh, so uh, we brought in uh, more uh, d uh, d uh, designers. Uh, Azumi, uh, designer in London, designed this uh, furniture. And uh, in 2016, we opened this shop in Sendai. So you you see that we combined uh, the furniture to make this shop. So it's a combination of very simple things, and that's what makes it uh, very interesting. And uh, so simple combination of uh, simple materials. Uh, we thought that, that that could be used for education, so we had a one-week workshop at a university uh, with the uh, architecture students, and together with Japan Foundation, we did a uh, workshop in uh, the Philippines. Our method is quite simple, so wherever you go, you can show uh, the structure and you, you can teach how simple it is to make things. So. That is the essence of our design. So these are local carpenters uh, in the Philippines participating. And also we continue to do workshops in Ishinomaki. And we invite uh, designers for uh, workshops for new product development. And so it's now used at the Blue Bottle Coffee or Amazon office uh, or the flag flagship uh, shop of Herman Miller's. And this is the current uh, Ishinomaki laboratory. So when people come to Ishinomaki, they want to uh, come to our laboratory. Uh, it's be become a, a sightseeing spot. This is the showroom on the second floor. And this is the current Irori Ishinomaki. We used to uh, lease only half. 
but the Isnomaki 2.0 team is now operating this. They've expanded to this uh, double the size. And they do uh, weddings and uh, uh, movie screenings here. I'm talking about the Ishinomaki uh, Kobo. Well, uh, initially uh, we wanted to uh, be the uh, town scenery uh, and then we wanted to become a creative uh, engine. And uh, two months ago I visited uh, that and I, I, I saw more DIY shops. Uh, so the uh, uh, stationery shop that, that we used, uh, some uh, other organization took over uh, and there were a lot of DIY going on and uh, using our furniture uh, was a source of pride so we saw our uh, furniture uh, at the butcher shop uh, we would also send as presents for end of year present uh, exchange so the identity of the town is being established uh, through these furniture little by little and I have been uh, inspired by this Ishinomaki lab myself and I have an office in Koishikawa, Tokyo and so it's a project called Design Koishikawa let me explain where it is so you have the Imperial Palace Tokyo Dome is to the north my studio is a little bit further north and uh, relatively close uh, to the University of Tokyo which is to the east so right hand side you see the Tokyo Dome you see my studio so Ishinomaki Lab uh, showroom is a little to the north and Design Koishikawa that's uh, another base that we've established that's also in this area and uh, it, we did a campaign that if you're in the neighborhood uh, design fee uh, is a uh, uh, half price so we designed a sushi restaurant so we started to think that we can provide good design to our neighborhood this is my office and uh, uh, we're very uh, famous uh, because uh, they see us working late nights so this is uh, a showroom uh, this is on the uh, is this, uh, uh, so um, it was a, pr a printing press on the first floor uh, and the residence on the second floor and we leased both floors and made it uh, uh, a showroom and the guest house on the second floor when I go to uh, foreign countries uh, friends say stay at my guest house but uh, I could not uh, invite uh, families to stay at my home so why not uh, remodel this to uh, uh, become a guest house and uh, we now uh, host interns we can uh, host maximum seven people you can uh, email uh, artists you're interested uh, and say we have a guest house if you come to Tokyo why don't you stay with us so that's how we use it and from middle of October so there's going to be an ex exhibition and uh, uh, we invited two musicians uh, Anthony Moore uh, wrote songs for the Pink Floyd uh, and uh, we're going to stay here and uh, do a concert so this is Design Koishikawa 580 square meters wonderful space great space but it was decided that it will be torn down in three years so we decided to uh, we asked if we could lease it for two and a half years, we negotiated and uh, it's now become an ex exhibition space so we do a lot of exhibitions this is a Shinomaki lab uh, exhibition this is Christoph Grevelin, a Swiss uh, designer with a unique perspective and uh, he stayed at my uh, guest house for three weeks and did an exhibition here and uh, last week there was the uh, design week highlight about 3,000 people came so in the field of design and architecture this is starting to uh, become a famous place but I have a lease only until June next year well, I've been in this uh, town for about uh, uh, 10 years and also I went to nearby high school uh, so uh, uh, I've grown friendly with uh, various bars and various uh, shops and we do we host the weekend weekend markets it's being held today and uh, uh, this is Sushi Kuramasa uh, I said uh, you don't have to pay for design but uh, uh, he sent me money uh, 
and uh, uh, so if you have uh, the connection uh, well, this design Koishikawa, which I named, it's a small effort uh, led by one artist, but I, I felt that there is the potential to change the community. I'm not asking others to follow suit, but the uh, architect uh, is reliant uh, on orders from others, and there's a criticism that uh, uh, we only make hardware. Uh, uh, but uh, I think I'm, I was able to uh, provide a, uh, an answer uh, in or solution uh, to those issues with this effort. Thank you for the very interesting project. So you're using wood, basically, the Ishikawa uh, or Koi Ishikawa lab. So let's have the next presentation. Next speaker is uh, Mr. Francois Rush. Please raise your hand if you listened to Francois yesterday. Very small number of people. I will explain why it's not a desire of arrogance, I promise. Even in some time nobody understands me, I don't try to be arrogant. So I will, so just, are you sure you gave me the right? Uh, Shit? No, uh, hello. No. It's not Mark working. XO? No, you have to change this. It's not a good one. To, to, yeah, to it's not a MacBook Pro. I gave you before, no? You sure? I'm pretty good. Ah, yeah! I'm apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always terrified <laughs> by starting talking. Uh, my shyness is coming back. So, okay, you could. Yes. Uh, okay. So, very quickly, uh, um, I want to explain uh, why I am in Bangkok, in fact, why I quit Paris, uh, the reason of my uh, immigration, voluntary immigration in a country which is. I don't make any contradiction, uh, I don't disagree with you, uh, my Thai friend, but uh, I love Bangkok because it smells bad, because the urbanism is chaotic, because all the top-down is unsuccess to organize a society, because in fact there is a resistance, a permanent resistance of the population of Thai people in a daily routine against any power, fake democracy or military regime as now. This is an incredible power a fantastic resistance and operative mode of the society which has never been colonized. It means something, you know, what means a country which has never been colonized. It means they are not English, they are not French, they are not coming from, uh, in fact, uh, um, uh, uh, cultures of, uh, of uh, importing cultures. I want to talk mainly about the three paradigms at the beginning. It's uh, the paradigm of the termite. When you look at the structures, the structures is coming from the conflict between the species which are blind, totally blind, and they are positioning their secretion, their construction through their pheromone. But the acting, the daily acting inside the termite mount is to open and close the doors to keep intact the queen chamber at the right temperatures, meaning they create the wind. And by creating the wind, they lose the positioning of their pheromone. So they perturbate, they corrupt the zero positioning of their own GPS to construct a building. Meaning that non-linear system, this conflictual system where two signals are able to be in, uh, uh, um, in uh, antagonism process is a way to produce something related to the nature. The nature is not this kind of biomorphism of copism, which is now since 10 years offending this relation to the nature. It's more to understand the protocol and the scenario more than the design of the complexity and the dispute between two signals. Oh, it's so cute. Another, uh, I love, I know that Japanese love cats. So I, I, I was forced to put a cat. But in fact, uh, it's uh, talking about the rhizobum, sorry, the Toxoplasma gondii, which is a protozoan. It's a protozoan which is able only to reproduce itself in the belly of the cat. And to reach 
the belly of the cat, says protozoan, small species, is first finding the way to be in the food of the rats. And from the stomach of the rats, this protozoan is reaching the brain of the rats to disinhibate the fears of the cats. And in fact, the cat is dancing in front of the rats as a suicide. And of course, the rats profit of this offer to kill and eat the rats. Meaning that we discover that what was before explained as a, as a degenerescence of the brain of the rats, we now, with neurobiology, trying to define or understand the causality and consequences of a situation of the loop of what we call ecosophy. So it means I've been perhaps myself inoculated by the Toxoplasma gondii to promote this monstrous predator, meaning we, have to, we are a chemistry bodies which are in the daily life, uh, in daily routine, infiltrated by bacteria. And I will show after that how bacteria are able to produce architectures. We are facing, you talked yesterday, I was not able to come because I was working, but we are talking about big data and knowledge. We could consider that now we are in a period of obscurantism, like the Middle Age. And the Middle Age found a way to go away, to escape from obscurantism through the perspective, through the Quattrocento in Italy, defining the perspective as a way to restitute the scale of the human between the one which has the power and the one which is a simple citizen. And the perspective in the Quattrocento was a humanism tooling to redistribute and renegotiate the position of each citizen at the same place, just according to the distances from the spectators to the vanishing point to distribute his high, his length, totally miscorresponding or not corresponding to his social position. We are now facing the GAFA. Google, Facebook, uh, which organize crypt their crypto uh, uh, relation of information where it's extremely dif difficult to have an open source, to go inside and to distribute, by the way, the real information. The real information are the artists like Assange, Snowden, they are like uh, um, um, Michelangelo, or uh, Brunelleschi, uh, or uh, uh, defining through perspectives the reorganization of society, the transfer of information, the access of what is hidden inside this enormous uh, big data. I was teaching 10 years in the uh, in, uh, US uh, at Columbia, and I quit my position two years ago, because two years ago I discovered that in the, after the Lehman Brothers crisis of the bank, mainly the students are coming exclusively from the wealthy people. So I was teaching in master class to people which are just coming back to refresh their mind and come back to their country without to question the relation of Power, without to question the organization of society, which is extremely, I don't know, it's a failure. We could see now the consequences of the situation by the election of Trump. When we humiliate the citizen, we get back now in our own democracy a monstrous populism. So it's not innocent that the Chengzhen rank of, of university is only taking care of what we talk about art science, sociology, philosophy, anthropology, everything, what we call the humanism science, is never in the rank of the Chinese system, creating an extreme lobotomization of the students, an extreme lobotomization of the education, making this ivory tower now responsible of the reaction of our failure of democracy. I came in Bangkok because of that. In fact, uh, two years ago, three years ago, five years ago, sorry, there was a big debate about genders in France. There was a big debate about uh, in the Christianism heritage of the genders, masculine and feminine. We, are, we were defining if uh, uh, homosexuals could marry with one million people in the streets against. And last year, there was this uh, president election with 40% of people voting for national party. So we are exactly in the same situation as on Trump. So I escaped in Bangkok. I create this, uh, I create. 
she created me, in fact. Uh, uh, 25 years ago, in 93, uh, this avatar, this transsexual, the transgenders in France. So he is always talking about place. That's why I'm back to the camera. I never want to appear as a deportrait myself as an architect to avoid to participate to the entertaining star system, to the way that finally architect is used as a puppet, is used just as a clown. So in fact, my, uh, my, I am just a secretary of this avatar, and I try to hear her, or hear him, in fact, in the way to disobey. That is my studio in Paris, the second one in Paris, and now I'm in Bangkok. I, hopefully, I'm not in the Riverside. I'm just outside of the Riverside crazy project to cover the river. But I came in Bangkok in 2012, in fact, and I change of name all the time. You could see all the name of my studio. I always uh, modify my name under the label New Territories to define the way that uh, I could produce the, my own banishment. It's extremely important that artists, architects negotiate with their own banishment. The possibility, they are not understandable. When uh, some of people here ask me, you have to be more clear, Francois, I understand perfectly to be more clear, that's why I speak slowly for us now. But clear is being explanation. Explanation in Latin makes, may, uh, mean making flat. Explanation is making flat. We really need in society of now shadows, relief, complexity, ambiguity, immersive paradox, even contradictory uh, situation, uh, assuming the conflict as a process of knowledge, as a process of <gasps> rediscovering, uh, reconquering, reconquer, reconquer our free will. So. That is my studio. I am on the Chao Praia. I'm so happy. In fact, I'm very lucky. My studio now, it was the beginning, a little bit clean before we trash everything with robotics. As a robot, we, w we work with a robot in the street. It's just a plug. We have 300 meters of electricity, so we have a radius around the studio mm -hmm. where we negotiate directly with the community. You talk about the community, which is extremely interesting. I don't need delegation of power. It's completely as the opposite of the French system when you have to ask the king the authorization to make a building. It's just a negotiation with five, ten people and to see how they could accept or not a degree of production in the street. You could see what we are doing in Bangkok. There's a high quality in Thailand of craftsmen. This kind of stainless is done by the craftsmen of Chinatown. It's uh, exactly uh, Tarknoi, the Tarknoi part where I'm living and where, we, where I'm working. And we defined uh, heterodox technology. Heterodox production, as I saw yesterday, about the mixtures of bamboo. That is a directly a bamboo production through a machinism robotic process of signal as a termite, which are not linear, of signal which are not uh, 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 hierarchy, in a hierarchy of production or in a chronology of production, but more in a versatile, in something uh, schizophrenic. So we do building, in sometimes abandoned building, abandoned building and the Saturn uh, building in Bangkok. We did a kind of a interesting a three meters high uh, concrete production with a robot, with a dwarf living inside, with a very interesting provocation situation of talking. We are, I was invited two years ago to make uh, lectures in New York. I calculate it was exactly two tons of uh, CO2 just by two talk about 10 minutes, so finally I refused to go to the lectures and I produced with the robots this kind of uh, signal of the two-tone of CO2 I was supposed to spread in the atmosphere by, by good consciousness of ecological propaganda from Bangkok to New York. So we have to re-question also our own dissemination and traveling in terms of uh, production, pollution, meaning ethical. So, for example, here, the worm, the sensor of the worm is directly driven and uh, manipulating the robot to produce an aesthetic which is not modeling, which is just coming as an artifact in the studio. That it was important for the community of Makassan. We did this little library two years ago, as I showed yesterday, with directly with this kind of a leaking, the leaking of the human material, the human substances on the mud coming from Makassan. It was three months of negotiation, and in fact, it was also in the slum a provocation, a transpassing. Transpassing in architectures, it forced people to react. It became a debate. It produced architectures as a public debate. And my, my, my main advantage is that to be an architect is to organize the possibilities that there is conflict, debate, disorganization, reorganization of knowledge, and by the way, doubt. Doubt about science, doubt about the doubt about the privileges of few people. We are thinking that they are authorized to 
conserve the top-down situation of knowledge. That is for homeless. I showed that before. That is Bangkok too. The advantage to be in Bangkok is I could renegotiate with my own country. If I stay in Paris, I will never be invited to a personal exhibition. So the fact to be in Bangkok makes me more attractive uh, for the French, uh, of course, uh, as usual. You are never a prophet in your own country, as you know. Uh, you have to assume that your country hates you for many reasons. And they are right to hate me, in fact, for many reasons and many positions I took against my monarchy, my republic monarchy. But we did a psychographic, a psychoman exhibition with 1,000 meters square with all the model of 25 years, everything, all the scenario, all the process, all the movie, including all the text you could see in the pictures downstairs, right down, uh, downstairs, down, all the text of 25 years, which are also the position, the attack ad dominem, the political uh, uh, and uh, uh, sociological uh, uh, um, uh, uh, posture uh, uh, against the situation of domination, uh, re-questioning the relation of knowledge re-questioning all the time the distribution of the knowledge. We did this kind of uh, talk yesterday about that. That is absolutely no modeling. It's just a reaction of the robot. I don't have time to work to talk about that. But I want to finish because uh, Fumio asked me a little bit to be more precise on this project. I quit Paris because of that. I quit Paris because we did this project, which is trying to make, to use the bacteria, which is a, a rhizobome, to produce the performative growing of the plant, using this bacteria to, to uh, in a nut nutritional way, to get the nitrogen. This bacteria produce an excess of nitrogen. And we were directly collecting the, the, the liquid, the, the viscosity, viscous liquid from the beaker to retransport by you could see here all the tube, but you could see here all the system of the tube on the ground and on the facade to distribute plant by plant, fern by fern, if there was about 2,000 fern globally, the little drop of the bacteria. So in fact, the, the living of one creating the living of the others. The nature is monstrous. It's talking about Eros and Thanatos. It's talking about the vitalism of the nature. Oh, because of this, the nature became incredibly invading the courtyard, totally uh, in, uh, completely invading the courtyard. You see, uh, without control, without domestication, and we got completely plan for all the neighborhood. Of course, if there is 40% of fascism French voting for the extreme right party, there is 40%, of course, on my neighborhood against any experimentation in architectures. It's the same rate. So we have to face extremely violence. The, 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 the neighborhood pouring their bean on the garden. So they love the nature. Everybody loves the green as the condition that the green is domesticated, as a, as a condition that the green is Disneylandized, as a condition that the green is innocent, inoffensive. It's something as a public garden of Versailles. But the green is the forces of the nature. The green, we have to readopt. It's not only a virtual. Green is not only a representation in virtual by the growing of the plant which exists since a uh, long time, uh, this virtualization is something which is extremely offending, cannibalizing, vampirizing our situation, our environment. So it's something about restituting this conflict, this debate between what is nature, what is culture, what is a city, and what is uh, colonization, which is unpredictable inside the little courtyard of the French. So I sell my house. I gave my house to Stephanie, my partner, in fact, and she stopped architectures. Now she's become a, a, a fantastic master of Kundalini Yoga. She was completely quit architectures. Perhaps she's happy. She's more happy. We talk about happiness. She's more happy than me. It's clear. Uh, uh, but it's my nature, as I told you, to a, a little bit push the wall, to push the wall. And in a certain way, uh, you can see interior, it's very protected very protected situation, very... I love this uh, house, not as a Villa Savoie of Le Corbusier, when you are in demonstration, demonstration of, the, of, the, of the transparency. It's more a grotto, a plateau grotto, from where I could dream a nightmare all the time. You can see the construction here, where all the beakers were done by hand, and you see the construction where all the insulation was external to the building, with a plastic, typical plastic we use in agriculture to protect the field, in fact, to protect the farm. And one by one, this kind of very simple mechanic construction. And 
And after that, manually, we, collect the sub we collected the substances, uh, reintroduced uh, in the nutritional pump on the ground to feed the entire building. Three floor building, a little facade, which is not, uh, which is the theaters, the theaters of the transfer of forces, of the transfer of life, of the transfer. And we talked a lot about glass yesterday, the glass. The glass which is done just by craftsmen. Craftsmen are so talented, sometimes we don't need robots. Uh, we need to use the fantastic potential of the knowledge coming from the Middle Age. So this association, craftsman, low-tech, high-tech, re-questioning re the reason of the robot, re-questioning also the perpetuation of the knowledge from the people who know uh, the substances, the material, Th that's very interesting because it's still existing in Tokyo. When I talk about um, uh, the Shenzhen rank, uh, avoiding everything, avoiding everything which is soft soft knowledge, soft humanism. Imagine a Japan without Shintoism. Imagine uh, tomorrow uh, they start to rank Japan because Shintoism is too important. And finally, imagine the, the German without the dualism, the dualism of Faustian. The Faustian dualism. Imagine the French without dialectic, from where I'm coming, as you could see. Uh, imagine the, the US without this kind of uh, illusion of phantasm of riding over the Wild West. So we need to negotiate the unknown. We need to reappropriate or reinject the unknown, the fears inside. And I want just to finish on that because we talk about Media Lab, but we talk also about dissemination. What I learn in in Asia, I could import it or export it in the Western. It's a project before I, I, I quit uh, uh, France in 2009. It's a project where we try to make a small building in a media lab for the people who know is a media lab of pay. Before the media lab was constructed by uh, Takamatsu, the, the, the Japanese architect. And we were doing a pea bar. We are doing a pea bar, which is a typical cure in China to drink every morning a fresh pea with an extremely valid validity in, team, in terms of um, allergy reliever, hormone balance, antiviral, antibacterial. So it's a typical Chinese medicine. But in the US, it appears as a disgusting, monstrous, ugly way to absorb his own uh, feces, his own experiment. But the pee is not toxic. The pee is a urea, and the urea, you metabolize the liquid by your stomach. So what we did, and just to finish on that, we did a machine. We didn't construct, because in fact the Media Lab refused at the end of the project. We did a machine not to depolluate the pee, but to depolluate the fears of the pee. To depolluate the paranoia of the pee, to justify that the people could drink their own liquid because it's safe. But the liquid is originally safe. So machine is used mainly to organize the relation of knowledge more than to organize a relation of production. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, in order to understand a little bit about Is what you're doing, can you go back to the green, uh, the house in the Paris? Yeah. I just want to make sure because people understand what, what you're doing with it. Uh, is they Can you show the green, green, green house? Green it's coming, house? it's coming, it's green coming. Uh, Fumio is here. Fumio is here. Fumio is here. Oh, yeah. So this is your house? Yes, I've been, I was, uh, yes, it's my house. Nobody and knows my house. And then here's the glass bottles, right? Yes, yes. And then the inside is the ba bacteria. Inside are the bacteria, that was a big And then bacteria is producing nitrogen. It's producing a liquid of nitrogen. We nitrogen. collect directly in the neck. We just so without that nitrogen, these plants doesn't grow. No, it just we we get the waters from the roof. We collect the water from the roof, and we make the mixtures, the mix, the miscibility oh. in the underground between the liquid from the bacteria from the beaker and the waters coming from the roof automatically. And after it's reinject as other by what we call hydri hydroponic, areoponic and hydroponic plant by plant dropping. So this. This is not possible without this uh, biotechnology or something. No, of course it's possible. It's possible if we buy nitrogen in the market of uh, chemistry, uh, if we buy Roundup of Motosanto, oh. if we buy nitrogen in the chemistry. But it's interesting now to face something where the loop of the nutrition is done by the scenario you develop mm. more than by the chemistry you could buy. It means that you are directly assisting 
facing it's more uh, natural of system life, ecosystem uh, of life. it's like the biomass in the forest yes it's not okay. that the biomass so the you forest. did it in paris yes and do you need the power power source or for that or it's ah, yeah, just we, uh, naturally no, turning? No, the pump the pump is a pump which is coming from it's not an unplugged building we are directly plugged to the system of electricity of Paris. So you are using electricity for yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I assume that I use the nuclear power electricity oh, in oh, France, oh, oh. and I'm guilty. And I'm guilty you could beat me for that. And then <laughs> uh, people complain. They complain because bacteria. Bacteria, well, this garden became invasive. The mm. bacteria make an incredible production of vitalism. So the building became monstrous. So they were starting to af be afraid that finally was... Uh, creating disease for the children, uh, possibility of contamination of the other garden. And it was an enormous complaint to ask the destruction mm. of the house. Okay. You also did something in Bangkok, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed that yesterday, uh, two days ago, yes. I saw the cow. The car. What do you mean? Cow, the cow? cow walking. Yeah, the cow. The cow is uh, something like this, yes. It's uh, the cow, we try to uh, use the muscling, the forces of the animal, oh. to redistribute the forces in the power station production. Okay. Yes. You just just uh, rather simply, can you explain why you are in Bangkok? Ah. I am in Bangkok. <laughs> uh, I am in Bangkok first because my house was supposed to be destroyed. I am in Bangkok because the French became nationalist and extremely fascist. I am in Bangkok because I don't recognize Paris, which is now just a, a city for tourism. What is the merit it's for, for you the, to be in Bangkok, Bangkok? I could negotiate in the street directly my production. I could do some paradigm. I could do some test, experimentation in architectures, and I could do something which is forbidden anywhere. And you know, we talk about that. I could do something dark. So Bangkok is rather easy to make uh, experimental as Goya, architecture. As Goya did the Pintura, ne the Pintura Goya Negras. Goya no, no need. Okay. I don't need the Goya. I could be Pintura Negras. <laughs> Just fact yes. that I for no. you it's easier to make experimental architecture. I could Bangkok, there is two scales. There is a scale of the condominium, which is directly a top-down, and the scale of the slum. All the infrastructure of Bangkok, because the authorization of the king, has been delivered to the poor people. So each time you have a freeway, you have a slum below the, be, you have a slum contaminating, snaking below the infrastructures. So the main infrastructures is directly contingent to the possibility that the lower class infiltrate Bangkok. All okay, Bangkok. Do you agree? <laughs> Yeah, somehow, yes, Thank there's you. the two scales, <laughs> yes. Oh. And, uh, because you're also talking about the system a, Yeah, there's the a lot of uh, possibility on ground, that's true. And Can you sit uh, there? Contested and negotiated. Can you come to sit there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you too. Hey. <laughs> so fun. In Ishinomaki, uh -huh. Hi. Do yeah, you d did you have uh, difficulties or...? <laughs> Or, or rather free, because after the tsunami yes. and earthquake, you I started to do something in Ishinomaki, and yeah. then yes. is, was it? As a, as a place to do something interesting, actually Ishinomaki is uh, much easier than a normal place. For example, I think uh, 2011 after the earthquake, oh, yes. um, oh, it's kind of a, uh, I say, uh, out of loose. Yeah. Mm. So it means, uh, so for example, I stayed uh, three days there and I can eat anything for free because there's so many volunteers, uh, could, you know, could feed uh, food. Oh. And uh, even uh, for three days after, you know, Bangkok, I go back to Tokyo, I forget to use the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, amazing. Cashless. It's almost Cashless society. Cashless, like a yeah. utopia. I just uh, take the, you know, some water you know, from the convenience store, oh. and then I totally forgot to pay money. <laughs> but at the <laughs> same time, um, same time also the, uh, even the police help mm. us. For example, the, we are looking for the, some uh, tools or some, uh, uh, some materials. Actually, I can use a guardrail for uh, making the, uh, you know, bar. Yeah. So something like this, um, but uh, not now, of course. At the time, it's quite so. So then, um, uh, yeah, this is a bit uh, dark story, but uh, mm. it's uh, yeah. So that's why the um, okay, I, maybe the I I could keep 
uh, working there. And then I can, uh, uh, because uh, I'm super curious there, same time. But now the situation changed. Totally changed. Israel. It's uh, really conservative now. Mm. So originally it's such a conservative city. Mm. But uh, uh, yeah, at the time, so lots of possibilities to do. And then, um, but at the same time, uh, I, I saw it, such a situation, so many ideas comes in, came in. And uh, I really want to develop that. So because, uh, so otherwise, uh, just uh, uh, useless, you know, such mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. So many, you know, even the famous designer and architect help, mm -hmm. you know, the area. So I really want to, the, you know, stacking on the wisdom. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, I, I, wanted, I wanted to keep uh, this project. Mm -hmm. So even the Ishinomaki Laboratory have uh, something there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems that, uh, Francois Roche is enjoying rather a kind of freedom, <laughs> mini, mi micro I level can, of the uh, <laughs> situation in Bangkok. But your project is a rather more larger scale, and you confront the difficulties to the bureaucracy mm -hmm. and also politics. Mm -hmm. It's unavoidable. Mm. It's unavoidable when you um, do the urban project. I guess. Um, also here, you have to negotiate with the um, local government and um, various stakeholders in the city. Yes, yes. But um, I, I agree, I, I have many friends, foreign friends like this. They love Bangkok because it's um, lawless. You can experience so many things, like in the dark. So the, the law is not e so... Even for Thai people, not only for foreign yeah. people. So law is rather loose, yeah. but yeah, you confront the politics. Yeah, law is um, quite, um, how to say, it depends on who you are. Mm. It's um, <laughs> applicable, I mean, uh, it's adjustable. Yeah, it depends I on see. who you are. You can see from the, I mean, uh, newspaper, so Japan's well, time. Do you think it's easier to build the same house in Paris in Bangkok without any problem? <laughs> uh, too, too it's too big. <laughs> it's already too big. But in a slum, in a slum, uh, I, I could negotiate, for example, what I did in Makassan. I rent for five years. Well, I think it's five euro per, per month, something like that. But I rent the space for rent and I negotiate directly with the community. Mm. A permit of construction in Europe or in, in Asia, or in, in Japan, in you have to refer France, to the administration. In, France, in Paris. But in Paris, I lie. I lie. You. No, no, I lie on the project and permit of construction. <laughs> That's why. If you want to do that in Paris, you have to trick your permit of construction. That's why it creates a laserless problem because I d present a project to the community and the, um, the, 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 the top down system of Paris, completely different on the one I construct. Mm -hmm. It was a strategy, a strategy to snake, uh, uh, to jump over this obstacle of administration, of a Napoleonian administration. What I found in Bangkok, in fact, it's a tolerance. I guess uh, the daily, the daily, the daily mm -hmm. routine, the daily day, the daily routine of the day mm -hmm. is more tolerant, more free, even in the military coups and in my democracy okay, in Paris. You wanted to see no, that. Yes, sir. actually I have an idea when he presents. I love his projects and I guess uh, the local people in the communities I work with can also love his project. I mean, um, I, 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 you. maybe you can experiment uh, the bacteria yeah. house <laughs> in um, like a Dijin and Kong San, they would love it. And it's, uh, it, it can be like, um, I mean, um, the way to attract people into the oh. creating something together. It's quite fun. Yesterday there was a discussion about bottom up and the top down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be the fun uh, about project. It, because what we what do you think uh, of this the big thing. urban project if you present to the city, yes. like those uh, waterfront project? Mm -hmm. Uh, you I are trying to do the bottom up, right? Because people agreed. Yes, because um, to be frank, I mean, um, I am a teacher. And um, why the authority need to listen to us without, I mean, the, the backup by the public and the media. That's why this is uh, also the, the reason why we need to, to work with the people. Um, I mean, besides, we need to really understand. It's quite uh, orthodox, like, we, we need to understand what people think, what, uh, I mean, how, um, what then kind what of the space they would like to use. What do you think about the balance between bottom, bottom up and top down, this but balance? Yeah, but uh, UDDC is not only bottom up, as you see that we meet, I mean, the deputy, uh, prime minister, because um, we try to engage all the stakeholders into the, the decision-making process. Um, 
it's not only, of course, it's not only the community residents. It needs to be um, also the private sector in the area and uh, the ministries, a lot of the ministry, and sometimes we meet uh, ministers. So if you so do the similar really thing again, uh, how do you do? You do the bottom up and also from top down. Yeah, but we always start from bottom up and, and we go with people to meet the big guy. Mm. Yeah. Sounds very correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I opened the textbook to follow the... No, but um, when we experiment the, um, the situation, it's, it's go with, it always goes with the flow. It's just like that. I mean, if, uh, for example, if I go alone, nobody really listens to, to me. Mm. Question to you, Mr. Ashizawa. So in Ishinomaki City, would you be able to do a big project like that waterfront uh, project. Did you not think about doing such a big project, like an urban planning project? Well, I wasn't in a, a position to be uh, involved in such a project. And uh, uh, if you wanted to do something like that, uh, you had to be very political. That I could uh, uh, foresee. And uh, also at the same time, my project was based uh, on uh, a private interest of wanting to help friends. That's where it started. So. While I was uh, traveling there, I wanted to make something concrete and wanted to be useful. That was my aim. And if it was uh, top-down, the process or the money flow uh, would engulf me. And as an architect, I probably uh, would have to spend a few years, maybe one or two years, before becoming useful. Of course, it's important to leave behind ideas. But uh, I thought as an architect, from a different uh, perspective, uh, we could start uh, very bottom up, uh, starting from furniture. I thought that would be more useful. I had that instinct that that would be more useful. Actually, we're starting to run out of time, but if anyone wants to ask a question. Um, really inspiring work. Um, Niran san, when I was hearing you give these amazing examples of beautifully researched projects that were then rejected by the government, it's and not, when not yet rejected, not yet rejected, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. maybe sideline, <laughs> sideline, side yeah. and um, Keiji san, you know the the um, inspiring work that you presented, mm. which was very moving, actually. Um, and you mentioned in your discussion that things have changed mm -hmm. significantly and that culture of generosity mm -hmm. maybe has, has you know, mm -hmm. dissipated. I wanted to ask, you know, kind of you both, and, and maybe you also, Francois, how do you stay motivated and where do you find the inspiration and the energy to make the next project after suffering those setbacks? <laughs> you don't want some first. <laughs> so, um, because it's just um, just four years, as um, Nancho Sang just mentioned, because it is just four years, and I guess it is her ex experimentation. So we try to apply um, the spirit of uh, Matsukuri that I study in Japan, with the context of Bangkok, and. I guess it's like a learning process of myself, my colleagues, and also the the people, and yeah, and 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 every project uh, give us a lot of um, I mean a new lessons and experience. Of course, it's um, sometimes it's quite um, disappointing because uh, when you do something, you put uh, heart and energy and a lot of resources, and when you have to go back to square one because of the coup d'état and um, all kind of uh, the theory of, um, I mean, the political instability. But, um, yeah, it just um, take the perspective and it's the learning process. And we always, um, because uh, we have uh, several projects, so we always have uh, the new question that motivate motivating us to, to explore further. And just uh, the last um, point is that um, our office is, um, the name is uh, Urban Design Center. 
development center, but um, we have so diverse, I mean, of uh, the area. It's not only urban designer, we have uh, economists, historian, artists, uh, and we always uh, discuss from, um, I mean, different uh, point of view. So sometimes we discover the new, always a new question. And it's just like this uh, platform, I mean, from the city to uh, Marx to uh, space for on the first day, always uh, sometime out of the box and we motivate each other. Okay. Yeah. In yes. fact, um, no, yeah, okay. Okay. now in fact, there is also a recognition of the solitude in Bangkok. So it was also a kind of sacrifice. I minimized by five the cost of the studio compared to Paris. So I invest in uh, directly in robotic, what I was not able to be done in Paris because my own salary and salary of my employees are five times less. And the food is fantastic. So I cannot believe in a country where the food is not fantastic and Thai are crazy good, like the Japanese. So in fact, it's, it's, it's very ma we have to assume a degree of solitude because in fact, mainly the expat, what I'm not, uh, I consider Mu as a, Mu more as an interzone, as Burroughs, Kerouac, or Ginsberg in Tanger, in the interzone of production, where I deliver my work in many binals. So I'm very lucky because the work is very visible. Our position and posture is incredibly visible, even if our economy is a bit weak. But uh, it it's means that we, we, we have the chance of to emit from somewhere which is not entirely framed by regulation. The people coming working for me, they sometimes they work with tourism visa, one year, two years. Meaning, imagine a country or Schengen or US where you have the story rounds of moving people, uh, where you have these possibilities that people don't have a contract visa or work visa. So it's opened a lot of possibility of meeting, meeting point. But we are in mm -hmm. the solitude. The expats are fascinated by the sex in Bangkok. So in fact, I'm voluntary in, uh, in Chinatown to put my studio and the w people working for me to protect them <laughs> against this uh, libido uh, capital. Well, just briefly, in terms of Ishinomaki Laboratory, the volunteer cannot uh, continue forever. It is up to uh, for a duration of two years. Otherwise, the motivation cannot be uh, permanently sustainable. So we decided to shift to business. Uh, uh, of course, uh, people uh, who uh, worked as volunteer uh, continue to help, but uh, uh, there needs to be an economic uh, uh, effect, otherwise it cannot be uh, sustainable. Of course, there is a direct return uh, for local people uh, who live there uh, in laboratory, uh, Ishinomaki. They can show uh, the improvement of uh, their town to their friends, uh, which is uh, also a very effective presentation of my own work for me. So uh, it can also, uh, and in the case of Koishikawa, I can do that more to, with all my friends. So in the long run, I, I am more motivated to invest into my own town. Well, but uh, if you had been uh, rejected, Rejected, uh, refused, uh, that would have uh, disappointed you. Yes, but so we need to be strategic. Uh, uh, it is time up. We need to uh, bring this session to the close. Thank you very much once again, everybody. So four years, very short. So all the best um, to you. Uh, I thank you very much. I'll do my best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.